Woo! We are live. Yeah, we did it. Hey, <laughs> welcome everyone. We are here for the celebration with Don McTague. Is that I saying that correctly? Yes. Perfect. Thank you. All right. I know that's a tough. I see that that's on you. FAQ. You you mentioned that. That's how the proper way of saying your name. I'm sure you get it. Uh, hear a lot of incorrect uh, pronunciations. What's the yeah, first way? Yeah, I don't mind. Of course you don't. As, as long as they remember it, they can say it wrong. But yeah, exactly. <laughs> so hey, folks, thank you for joining us. Everyone here. We're gonna uh, I'm gonna do some of the off, uh, items that we're offering on latefstore.com with Dawn. She did some incredible pieces. We're going to go through some of those. We're going to go to the screenshot. Um, we're going to ask her if she remembers anything about these uh, um, she drew any of the artwork. Great artwork, by the way. I don't know if you see it yet, so make sure. Well, we'll see it together if you haven't seen it at ladydeathstore.com. And then, uh, we'll, uh, you know, if you have any questions, throw them our way. And we've got a whole lineup uh, today of stuff going an uh, hour or so. so. Dawn's also going to be doing some live drawing. And we got Brian Polito on uh, Gonna get them together as well and hear great stories between them. This is really fun. Okay, so at ladyfstore.com. Oh, that's the wrong one. Now at ladyfstore.com. All right, so I'm gonna jump over here and we're gonna look at there uh, we go. Here we go. There we go. Can you see that dog? Uh it's loading. Okay, it's there. All right. Oh, right, so Hi, this everyone. is the first one. But you got any, um, I don't know if you see any comments. Oh, yeah, we got some comments coming. Hey, Don. Oh, yeah, a lot of folks. A lot of folks are here to show their support and their celebration of you. So, okay, this one I, I want to talk about because this, this print, I've seen this. This one is at cons. When people see this on display, they, they stop in their tracks, they turn their head, and they're like, wow. What's the story behind this one? This one is, we never put it as a print. So this is the time we're doing it as a print. That's awesome. And I, I know this was uh, these your prints are really popular. These they look great. I don't know if you can see behind me. I've got some of them up on the wall. The the artwork is amazing. So what can you tell us about this one? We call it the unholy graveyard. Okay. For that one, um, I did the pencils and Ula Moss did the colors, and she did such an incredible job. Um and when it comes to drawing Lady Death, when I get an art assignment from um, Brian Polito, it, it usually has some notes, sometimes more detailed than others. It really depends on the project and what he's planning it for and all of that stuff. So with this one, he the art notes were, I, you know, he wanted Lady Death kneeling in the foreground in a graveyard. And on the main version that's all colored in red, there's a bunch of zombies. And then on this one, remove the zombies and give her a risque outfit. Um, and for this one, I, uh, you know, it's always a tricky thing to come up with a new outfit for Lady Death. I love doing it, but I never want to disappoint, right? So <laughs> it always takes a little while to like come up with something. <laughs> um, and for this one, just, I wanted to do something a little bit different with her sheer cloth. And um, I don't know exactly how this idea came about, um, but I look at a lot of random things for inspiration, like for uh, Lady Satanus. Am I pronouncing that correctly? Lady Satanus. Satanus. For Lady Satanus, um, I was inspired by, sorry, I'm making you click all over now. Oh, um, no. I was inspired by the frilled lizard for her outfit. Um, oh, yes, she looks like a lizard. <laughs> yeah, so her Rocky sleeves, yeah, her sleeves on either side, I was I was inspired by the frilled lizard for it. Don't ask me why, I have no idea. Um, and then other times I'll look at like Work. wedding dresses if, it, if it's a gown and I'll kind of just look at hundreds of wedding dresses and certain things will inspire me like the way this collar was done but then the way the embroidery was done over there and it just kind of turns into this soup in my brain <laughs> so i'll take it from all over the place and for me it's extra fun to pick something that actually isn't close um for the hell witch red gown i was inspired by a I'm making you click all over. <laughs> you have that one. Uh, I don't know if that one's on here, but just I could say anyway. The the Hell Witch uh, red mm -hmm. gown where she's on the throne. Um, Brian gave me the this challenge. One, uh, yes, that one. 
the red gown. Yeah. He gave me a challenge to design a gown for Hellwitch. And so, and he wanted her on a throne. So I needed to draw a throne and then also try it because Hellwitch has wings. She's a little harder to fit on a throne. So that's why I put her sideways. Um, <clears throat> and the dress I was inspired by a wine glass. And I, it was just a, a regular crystal wine glass, but the way that the cuts were in the wine glass, I was like, huh, that's really cool. So I put them on her sleeve and then kind of just made a mashup of it onto the rest of her dress and just sort of followed that crisscrossy sort of pattern. Um, so it's, it's weird where everything comes from. And then the inspiration for the uh, chair, I got a bit from a, um, I found an antler seat. So it was a seat all made of antlers. And then I also looked at some like wicker uh, lawn chairs. <laughs> and, and then the uh, the two tusks were like, you know, inspired from like a tusks of an elephant. <laughs> so I don't know. Wow. That's a good explanation. So <laughs> a, a true artist taking uh, a little bit of inspiration from everywhere, not just the normal, obvious Things that, that is so great, and which I didn't—I never realized that was a throne. I thought that was like a bed or something like that. So that, that's cool. So no, <laughs> well, then I didn't pull it off right. Oops. <laughs> well, maybe if we saw the full, full <laughs> image, that would do that. But uh, yeah, that, that's something else too. That a lot of people they mention what they like about your art. Um, it are these outfits that you you come up with for her because it's not just yeah. I, I, obviously, what you're saying. You have put a lot of time and effort to coming up with these. Um, these out that really does stand out, and folks really seem to enjoy that. Thank you. Uh, anything for about this one reminds me. Stay there. Reminds me of like a Vegas showgirl, I guess. With the what, what can you say about this? That one, um, you know what, the Vegas showgirl, that makes sense. That wasn't in my mind for this one. And this, of course, was six years ago. So I'm trying to remember <laughs> what was in my head for it. <laughs> I remember like Lady Satanas and Hell Witch because they were um, more recent. Yeah, um, for this one, I, I think at the time myself personally, I was really into wearing a lot of feathers. I was really into um, like single collar, almost kind of the... Uh, k-pop meets goth uh clothing style and so i uh i was into that myself and so a lot of times uh, granted i would never be caught dead wearing this clothes myself right but like in a in a in a world where i had lady death's uh let's see, confidence <laughs> and body. Um, sure, maybe so. And so it's it's just kind of, I will mix some of the things that I would like to wear mixed with the stuff that like Lady Death could pull off. <laughs> so <laughs> it's fun. <laughs> let's see, so, but uh, oh yeah, cause I, I want to ask you about, so do you base her uh, facial figures on anyone or is it just, no, I Easter? don't. Is it just That's just kind of pulled off the top of my head. And over time, I have really been trying to focus on how I draw Lady Death's face. And like these, these pieces were kind of, you know, everyone's art style or maybe mine more than others. I don't know. I'm not trying to like put every artist in, in a category, but like your art does morph and change over time. Um, <clears throat> and like, I've tried to make Lady Death look a little more womanly as time has gone on. And I've been working on her face to try to make it, you know, the, the, right, the right age. Like Lady Death is not someone, at least in my mind, Brian can correct me if I'm wrong, but she's not someone that like goes under the cutesy category. Um, and sometimes I, I've caught myself where, you know, I'll start leaning a little too cutesy. And so I, I keep trying to pull that back. So it's a little bit of a, of a pendulum swing also. And, you know, in other projects that I do, I do sometimes struggle switching, um, switching the, the style of how I draw for the character that I'm drawing. So like, um, 
a running joke in Rothic is for a while I was drawing Rem 8 and she is a beautiful Asian character. And then I started making all the other characters in the Rothic universe have a little bit of an Asian uh, look to them because I was stuck in features, you know? So I'm trying to, to, to do better at not getting stuck in features and actually having specific features for each character. And that's really my focus right now when I draw Lady Death is I'm really working on her features, probably because I don't have a specific person I'm basing her on. You know, Lady Death is Lady Death. And, you know, I, I wouldn't necessarily want to make her look like an existing person because she isn't, she's her. Um, but then, you know, in that, like I could draw whatever does make the, the honing in on giving her her proper features, something that I'm I'm kind of keeping an eye on in my own work to make sure that I I represent her correctly, if that makes sense. Or if I've just gone way too <laughs> airy fairy, that's fine. No, it's great to hear your process and your thinking process behind it. Um, because yeah, just as, as a fan, just viewing the art, it's just kind of like, it almost, sometimes it almost feels like it's just magic because, um, you know, because you start with a blank page, there's nothing, then all of a sudden you pull out of nothing, create something. So um, it's really neat the to hear blank that. page is the scary part. I'm telling you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so for me personally, I've seen it too. Like when people like kind of all these at uh, so this style of face. I think mean, this this is the one that really kind of stands out. Um, it does have the more of the mature look. Right. Seems like for for Lady Death, and that that one seems to be the one that um, I see at the booth, um, uh, slinging comic books. It is the uh, the image that folks really, really seem to to groove on. That uh, that's awesome. That fake figure. Uh, okay, so let's let's stop that real quick. So folks, be able to go visit the LadyDeathStore.com, and because it is our operation with Don McTig. We are going to check out, let's see what we got, any comments, any questions we want to go uh, through. Um, oh, hi, Brian. Well, Brian's actually not on the going to be. Oh, he's in the, he's in the uh, comments. He's in the, he's in the, He said live. correct, yeah. not cutesy. <laughs> not cutesy, not cutesy. That's correct. Um, oh, let's see. Boom. We got from Jeff. So happy I finally got the Spellbound cover and I got the remark of it. Wow. So these remark conditions, that, that's going to be, uh, really fun for people. I, I noticed that this remark, uh, let's go back to that. The box that we have on this one, Brian has, uh, oop, I didn't, I didn't share that yet. Share screen. Boom. He has made the remark area huge. So that's going to be uh, so fun to see what you come up with for that, for that area. I'm um, looking forward to it. A little bit nervous, but really looking forward <laughs> to it. <laughs> So wow, yeah. So this, I don't think let's see, are they um okay, not sold out, not sold out. So folks, you can come here, get this. So basically you're gonna not only will you buy you get the book, it's on uh uh what, what's that what's that quality paper? Let's see, what's it say in here again? Strathmore, um, right? Strathmore, that's it. Yeah, because that from what I say, you artists, you love that that kind of paper because it really I, I guess grips the really pulls out details. Uh yeah. And the artwork. So this, so three hundred bucks essentially. You get a one of a uh, you get this and a one of a kind official remark from Don. And not gonna it's gonna it's gonna be a, a surprise what you're gonna get. You know, you're not able to request anything um, specific, but you know Don's artwork. So you're gonna get whatever you're gonna get. It's gonna be amazing. It's gonna be incredible. So uh, how would you so? How would you cut this when you got that little area to put Lady Death in? Would you are you going to be doing uh, like a profile, fa a full figure? Uh, how would you? What, what's your uh, process on that for these uh, remarks? Well, the way that I'm going to work on them is, I have a couple here. They're behind me, but I have some here that are um, test ones. So I'm going to test out a few things, but I do plan to use things like, let me get them for you. I have acrylic paint. 
Um, and the reason why these uh, remark editions have a color on them is because I've specifically requested it. Um, and because Lady Death has white hair, right? And I think that, that um, now that I am learning to work more with traditional paints and stuff like that, I'm gonna work with, um, I'm gonna work with paint to to do the remarks on this one. Um, a lot of times, traditionally, remarks are done with with pen or um, sharpie marker and stuff like that. There is something called um, paint pens, so I have those as well. I have some in gold, and they're all like acrylic as well. Um, for people who are interested in the actual art supplies themselves, I use Molotov uh, acrylic paint pens. So I'm gonna use these for precision work sometimes. Um, and then I can show you all what really inspired all of this was the uh, Lady Death Masterpieces art books. Um, so I got a few of these as complimentary books, which is so cool of Coffin Comics to do. And then um, this one is still a work in progress. So I plan on hopefully finishing it in the live art section that's coming up soon. But um, if you can see the paper is red. And so then when I paint her white hair, it really, really pops. And so that's the inspiration for the way that the remarks are done on a colored section. Um, and I'm really, really excited about it. And I'm so glad that the paper is Strathmore because it'll it'll absorb the, uh, the paint really well and it won't just kind of sit on top, which does happen on some like uh, high gloss uh, books. It's still there, mm -hmm. it still sticks, but it's a little easier to chip off. Whereas when it's on a Strathmore paper, it's gonna stick and stay. Um, and then also I use like a little bit of uh, colored pencil to give her eyeshadow because I love to do that. And then like a few highlights and stuff on her cheeks and things, I'll be able to make them really pop. And then some, I may actually even paint her whole face in full. I need to test it out and try everything and make sure I'm not gonna ruin your book. <laughs> so I have some test books that Brian gave me for that purpose. <laughs> Wow. And oh, yeah, I just remember too, these are limited to 10 each of these. So we only have, uh, so folks, if you look at what you're seeing, what Don's talking about, you better jump on this right now because we these are each limited to 10. We've got the Naughty Spellbound. We've got the uh, Naughty Autumn, the Naughty Chain, and the Naughty Hot Shots uh, Official Remark Edition. So these are each limited to 10 each. Yeah, and it's going to be amazing. I can't wait to see what... Uh, the final product is once these are complete. Um, Me too. I'm really excited. <laughs> I, I need to think about all that. Oh, and then you asked if I'm going to be doing full bodies or how I'm going to fit in that space. Um, I am planning to probably stick mostly to like busts and headshots um, just so that I can get through all of the 40. Um, but then I'm going to be using things like metallic paints, you know, gold, things like that, that just give it an extra pop and pizzazz. <laughs> and um, in order to, uh, to make it so that I don't get it outside of the coffin, what I hope to do, and I'm going to test this, is I have something called frisket. So it's like think clear uh, post-it tape. All yeah. right. So it's got the amount of tack of a post-it. Um, generally a post-it doesn't do anything to affect the paper and this stuff peels off very easily. Um, and I'm going to set it around the exterior, kind of like you do when you're painting your house and you don't want your paint to get on the, the, the oh. window frame, you yeah. know, so yeah. that kind of thing. And I'm going to put it around the coffin so that if I do flick or splatter paint anywhere, it's not going to get all over the actual cover. So it'll all stay it contained in that little box. It's gonna be like a little window. <laughs> oh, it looks like I need to refresh my uh, browser because folks are, are saying here that uh, these are sold out already. What? <laughs> Holy cow. Uh, all right. Uh, yeah, so that, uh, let's see, that, uh, yeah, sold out. I think they're sold out in six minutes. Yeah, all gone. <laughs> okay, well. <laughs> Wow, then at least the people who are getting them know what I'm going to do. Yeah. Wow. All right. That's great. Well, that's really neat to hear about. That's how you, that's the process of doing that.
So folks who did get lucky enough to grab these, holy <laughs> cow. All right, let me just say something real quick. Since these are sold out, let me say this. Folks, visit ladydeathuniverse.com. Sign up for the Coffin Comics VIP mailing list. So you will be, uh, you'll get the email so you don't miss next time we do something like this with, with Don. Also, you can, uh, boom, text 48448 to and type sworn to that number down there, scrolling, scrolling down there. And you'll get a text alert as soon as uh, these sales go live. Uh, obviously, you you need to know this stuff. Otherwise, it, you're going you're gonna to miss out. Obviously, holy cow, Don, that's incredible. Uh, congrats on, on selling out so quickly. Um, woot, woot. Holy cow. Thank you all so much for your support. And thank you for being on it. <laughs> Oh, look, look at this. Let's see. Uh, oh, is that? Yep. Oh, can't wait to get my. Oh, it looks like Scott. Yay, Scott. Uh, Carmen. Boom. Most, uh, most hall photos are spot too. All right, Brittany. It looks like I have not uh, updated my, my browser yet. Okay, let me get rid of that. Wow. Holy cow. <laughs> oh, it's this. Uh, all 40s total around two minutes. Wow. Jason, thank you. Okay. Well done. Holy cow. That just. Uh, it's all, all right. All right. Okay. Looks like uh, it's official. Those are sold out. <laughs> there, there might be something else. All right. There's also uh, some other goodies on there. There's prints. Prints will not sell out because we print those uh, uh, on demand. So, you know, if you want to still participate, you can get some prints. Amazing. They look beautiful um, up on the wall. Framed. They look incredible. I know a lot of folks have, uh, they even, you know, they even have the uh, the books portfolios just filled with your artwork uh you have some like amazing fans out there don it's just like, i you love you guys but the tea and coffee comics together holy cow <laughs> that's incredible so all right let me ask you a question about this what uh how did you first hear about lady death what's your story uh <laughs> Way back when, okay, I don't, I don't go as far back as so many of the amazing Swarns and Fiends, but the first time I heard of Lady Death was when I was like 19 years old and I found a Gen 13 comic book. And that's kind of, that was my introduction to comic books, period, because I lived overseas my whole life. So um, I hadn't seen any comic books. I didn't know anything about them. I didn't know they existed. So I then found a um, Gen 13 book. And in there is Lady Death at one part where grunge has some sort of like trippy dream or something like that. And Lady Death was there. So that was my first introduction to Lady Death. And then um, when I entered into comics, I um, started seeing all the, the Lady Death stuff. So I started in comics at, in 2012. Um, my first job for Brian Polito actually was i drew it in like december of 2013 and then the cover was finished in january and it came out in 2014. um and that was the lady death shimmer edition so she has like um she's sort of sitting and there's candles behind her and stuff for anyone who knows what i'm talking about anyway that was my very first in lady death job but you know uh, in 2012, when I started going to conventions and stuff, of course, I see, saw Lady Death stuff everywhere and, you know, met Brian and Francisca. And it was all just like, oh, my God, so good to meet you, <laughs> you know. Um, and then it was just like the hugest honor and extremely terrifying to actually draw something for Lady Death like that. That one. That's right. <laughs> yeah, that's the print. So that's the very first one. Wow. Do you remember anything about the, uh, as it was a long time ago, or anything about the- uh, uh, Anything about the, it? Well, yeah. um, I did get given the option. So Brian told me, you know, I as long as I kept within the, uh, the Lady Death format of, you know, her, she has the garters, she has the, 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 bikini set essentially and then you know the the long sleeves and there's like there's a format for it um i was told that i could kind of put my spin on it so um that was really fun um <laughs> i was like oh yes we are going to have fun here <laughs> um and so i designed that 
crown thingy and, you know, just had fun with it. And so all I remember is just being so excited to, to do something that has that, like, you know, Lady Death has such a strong commanding personality, but then you can put, whoops, sorry. Then you can put, you know, the, the sexy on it as well and the queenly and it's like this amazing mash of all these things I admire in one character and I was just like fuck yeah man <laughs> and then of course Sabine just like knocked it up many notches with her coloring and you know what we should mention real quick that you're going to be at Sworn Fest 2021 yes! February 20th to 28th so excited uh, to have you there it's uh Last year when you did Fiend Fest, it was just, it was, um, I don't want to say a, like a religious experience, but it was just, it was, it was next level to have all these people that you talk to throughout the years online to all come together. And it's just like focusing on one thing, one event off of comics and all the artists celebrating. So everyone getting together, it's almost like a big family reunion. Um, I can't so wait. It's going to be incredible. Um, yeah, just to see what the things that Brian has in store for, for us all. It's just going to be, uh, it's going to be wild. Uh, yeah, let's see. We've got anything, uh, anything else to finish up on that, that, uh, about Lady Death when you first started, when you first discovered her, anything else? Um, honestly, uh, one thing I'd like to say as far as working with Lady Death is that, um, I really admire your guys' organization. Like, it is so cool. And, you know, I have my schedule of when I'm supposed to um, be starting on a project for Coffin Comics. And, you know, about a week out from when my time is, is coming up, uh, I will get a contact from Brian Polito with my assignment or, you know, what his thoughts are. And like, I don't know how he keeps all of that straight in his head because I'm one of hundreds of artists that he's working with, you know, and to, to keep everybody's schedule in mind and to know when to contact them. And like, he never misses it. Like how? I, I don't get it. And then when I send in my layouts and my sketches, I know that within about 10 minutes I'll have heard back and like, and I know that's how it is for everyone else as well. And like, it, it just amazes me. And then as far as the whole remark and signing thing and how everything is going to be working for this one, it's all so organized and like, you know, a half an hour before I was supposed to go live, Jimmy contacts me with like the list and the links and you know, what time. And it's just, it's, it's so awesome. And I love it. <laughs> Well, Brian Polito, you know, it all comes, you know, top down from the Politos and how they, how they do that. But it's Brian's training as an assistant director at uh, New School. That's where he got his training. And it basically, where he runs Coffin Comics as if it's a film film set. And ah. he's just like, everything is, and he speaks in the vernacular of, of the film industry. And, uh, you know, we're all, two of us also uh, have film degrees too, Agos and myself. Uh, I want, it's like a lot of folks, they're all on the same page with that. And it, because of the scheduling, because of the love, it's just like, you know, uh, and also you know, Brian's up, as you tell, he's an actual leader and got that go, go personality. So it's just, yeah, that's why everything is just runs uh, like clock. I love it. <laughs> yes. And it's definitely something that you don't, it's hard to find creative folks. But I think that's what Brian, his gift too, he's able to find folks like yourself who fit perfectly, who are on board with it, that that also understand it has the work ethic, has the um, uh, well, amazing artwork as well. But also, you know, uh, it's a team player that, that wants to, you know, take it to the next level and it, a game um, mentality. So basically, yeah, it's just like he finds like-minded folks who are, who are in, want to want to follow a schedule like that. So it's just, it's just great. So it's um, very cool. Oh, and like Jason said, another big shout out to Coffin for um, allowing me permission to live stream the work. That is that is way cool of you guys. Oh yeah, well it definitely uh, definitely helps. And we we love the promotion. We love uh, you know love your artwork. We love that you you know spread the word. We love that you always wear uh, Coffin T-shirts. Yep. Thank you so much. <laughs> Appreciate that. 
All right, so here, here's a question I have. So those gloves that you wear, is that art? Is that just a style or is that for doing art? It's for doing art. Um, I actually got these ones custom made for me <laughs> because I had a very particular thing that I needed. Um, and sorry, have my workout reminder. Um, so yeah, what they are is I wear them to protect the paper from my hand. Um, and sometimes I will have like a scrap piece of paper that I use, and I know a lot of other artists use like a, a piece of paper that's kind of a barrier between their hand and the page that they're working on. Um, and for me, I just like having this as an additional barrier. And I, I've always worn them like for years. Before I went pro, I've been wearing these um, whenever I drew. And so it's just, it's a habit thing. And, you know, I can cover my pinky as well. And so everything is protected, or at least the paper is protected. And now I can't live without them. That's right. <laughs> yeah, they're cool too. I mean, <laughs> so I was like, yeah, because they look, they look cool. I thought maybe that's what it was for to protect the paper, but yeah, it, they look great too as a, as a, as a fashion as well. Yeah, I mean, fashion is wearing it on my left hand. I really only need it on my right. And most of the time I only wear one on my right. Um, but I didn't want to look like I'm rocking Michael Jackson, even though I am a huge Michael Jackson fan. It's just, you know, <laughs> for being even. <laughs> Got to keep it symmetrical. Uh, let's see. Uh, shout out to Dawn. Your artwork is amazing. Honey, love it. Thank right. you, Michael. Oh, no, Michelle. I'm sorry. I'm like yeah. not reading correctly. Uh, let's see another one. Oh, you lovely Dawn from Eric. Love you, Eric. Uh, da, da, da. Anything else? Any updates in here? So, folks, we got about 15 minutes or so. Uh, I should mention that. Uh, which one? Up next. Boom. Up next. Dawn's going to be using live drawing. It'd be pretty neat to see. Uh, see this done, performed live in front of our own eyes. So, have your questions for us, Dawn. That one questions about artwork and her, her style and her uh, techniques. But, uh, so stick around for that. We're going to be coming back on that one. So uh, what's your thoughts? What does, okay, so you do some Hell Witch covers. What, what are your thoughts on Hell Witch? What does Hell Witch mean to you as a character? You know, for Hell Witch, she has, it's, it's, I, I could be so wrong with this, but like in my opinion, Hell Witch is um, similar to Lady Death in some ways, but at least in the way that I approach her artistically is just amped up. You know, I take I take the uh, this not that Lady Death isn't sexy, but like um, Hell Witch has like sexy mixed with naughty in it, and then spun <laughs> and. Um, that would be my approach to drawing her is just Lady Death has a little bit more of a regal air. Hell Witch has a little bit more of like, uh, I'm badass, I'm sexy, I know it, and I don't give two shits about it, you know, that kind of thing. And even though Lady Death also has that, I'd say Hell Witch takes it like a little bit more into the uh, aggressively um, <laughs> aggressively aware of what she is like and and just like plays on every angle um, more strongly than, than Lady Death, who has a bit more, in my opinion, or at least Lady Death to me has more of the, the regal air and the queenly air, even though she is sexy and she is a badass and all of those things. I'd say Hell Witch, I guess, is a little bit more like the, the, the evil sister <laughs> in that, in that <laughs> way. Yeah. Oh, for sure. I, I I agree with you on that. That's a that's a good take on that because she definitely uh, amped up. Uh, yeah. For sure on the comic book, and that's the one that got uh, banned at at the printers. <laughs> right. But, so oh, some more love here. Don Fest. Thank you, Varel. Uh, Carmen. Yeah, hell, which is everything. All right. Oh, you got your. Uh, you gonna get your Bob Ross up? Gonna make some happy little uh, <laughs> little hell witches here. Um, let's see. We got Jason. Yeah. Your Thank you, Jason. Looking forward to seeing you. 
Uh, hey, Jun, who, who are some of your influences? I'd say my my biggest influences artistically are probably J. Scott Campbell and Ebass. Um, they are also, they've been extremely kind and helpful to me artistically and have taken their time to give me critique, um, advice. <laughs> you know, I started out drawing comic pages on printer paper because I had no idea <laughs> that technically you're <laughs> supposed to draw 11 by 17 and better cardstock. <laughs> and I just was like, oh, I need to draw. Here's some paper. Like I just, I had no idea what I was doing or how to, to do those things right. Or even like the art of setting up a comic book cover. And especially in the more limited market where, um, you know, they are, um, they have risque versions, they're, um, you know, detail in the outfits and putting effort and time into them was something I really learned from Ebass. You know, he, he is like, hashtag goals for me when it comes to outfit creation and just coming up with cool shit. <laughs> and um, he has that that really figured out and like his imagination is just another dimension. And um, so I'd say for, you know, also how to fit things into the space that we have of a cover and, you know, uh, Ebass and J. Scott Campbell have also really given me a lot of instruction on that and explained things to me. And, you know, it's not like I, um, you know, I have to respect their time. I can't be bugging them always, but like at conventions, for instance, you can, you can, you know, while everybody's having dinner, you can shoot in a little question and <laughs> here and there respectfully to, to get their, their critiques and their opinions on what you're doing and how to adjust things. Anatomy was a huge one that they've, you know, talk to me about. And so I'd say that between the two of them, those are my greatest influences for sure. And I just have mad respect for both of them. Do you have formatting? Is it all? Could you repeat that? Oh, have you had or is it all self-taught? Oh, I am self-taught slash peer taught, like um, from the artists that have like given me critique and stuff. So when, what was the thing? Do you remember, uh, I mean, what kind of things did you draw when you start drawing? Was it nature? Was it uh, fantasy? Um, or we were, uh, you draw when you're drawing as a little kid? Um, I have never been big on nature. So like nature, uh, animals, all of that, I just, Honestly, like in my artistic brain, even as a kid, they, they just weren't there. <laughs> I just didn't didn't care. Um, but I um, I've always been very interested in the characters, the, the people. And um, for a long time, what I would do in in school and with my friends is I would get commissioned to turn them into princesses. So like literally when I was like eight, I was drawing commissions for people where I would make them like almost a coloring page of um, themselves as a princess and I would create a signature for them of how to write their name really pretty and like that was what I would do and then I got really into anime and started following uh, anime styling in my art and you know uh, from the years that I lived in Japan I was really into, you know, drawing the big eyes with all the little sparkles on them and, you know, uh, the outfits and the way that they made them. I mean, the, the imagination as far as outfits and all of that in uh, the anime art is actually really amazing. And they just come up with some crazy cool stuff. So um, that's kind of how my art morphed and and went through and what my influences were in those times. But of course, I loved, you know, Disney cartoons and you know that's where all my princess commissions came from. <laughs> and now I just like it's a little bit more grown up princess commissions. <laughs> that's true, yeah. It's yeah. Oh, oh, hold on a second, hold on. A we got some breaking news. Hold on. Hey, Psycho Sean. Hey, Sean. Hey, hello, good to see everyone. Dawn, great to uh, see you in person. Hello. <laughs> Hello. I was actually lucky enough a, a while ago 
to get some beautiful. Oh, oh, oh look at that. thank you. Yeah, I was very excited when I opened that up back when I was just doing the Kickstarter, you know, being like everyone else here, shopping, looking, see, figuring out what I want on the Kickstarter and saying, oh, I want a mystery envelope in case I get something from Dawn. Oh, uh, thank lucky you. To get the one I was looking for. Okay, so back to here. Breaking news, breaking news, breaking news. We are definitely sold out of all of the remarks editions. So we definitely th want to thank all of you for, uh, you know, for purchasing those. I think those remarks probably sold out within about, oh, I don't know, 60 seconds. I would say about 60 seconds. Holy cow. Wow. Took a minute. Took a minute. Probably took a minute to get those uh, remarks sold out. So I know we're going to be excited about getting those worked on. Yeah. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Definitely also just want to thank, uh, you know, I definitely got those buyers out there that have, uh, you know, always supported Coffin Comics. New, We have new, new people are coming to the site because they knew Don was going to be a guest. And of course, all of our other sworn nation have just been foaming at the mouths, just waiting to get something, uh, you know, something specific and especially getting something signed. We normally, we don't offer having an artist sign uh, the book. So we definitely wanted to make sure that we had this uh, worked out with Don, with you. So we definitely appreciate it. I know that we had Sarah, right? Uh, Sarah Heppler, I know that she got on and got the items that she wanted right away at 9 a.m. I know Carmen as well, uh, Carmen, Carmen Sakara that she got on and she got her items as well. So I want to give a shout out to those two people for sure. I know Jason Howell, you know, Jason Howell, he came on and he was able to get some of the items that he wanted, including the beautiful, uh, that Naughty Chain Virgin Art Edition that I think just looks looks amazing. And he also got that pinups Naughty Autumn Virgin Art Edition as well as some other items. So I definitely want to uh, thank him for all of his support as well, including uh, David Ross, right? So David Ross, again, he got that beautiful um, print. You know, so it looks like he got himself a couple of prints. Oh, and he's getting these signs, all right? So he's gonna, so these prints are gonna be, you know, magically sent off to the uh, Canada, <laughs> magically <laughs> signed by our wonderful Dawn, and then magically sent back to us, and then, uh, you know, uh, yeah. talk to you as well. And I know, and again, I know some people are getting the CGC graded as well, Dawn. So uh, they're very excited about getting the, uh, you know, about being able to get both the, the one of the remarks CGC as well as just some of their other uh, items CGC. So, you know, they're pretty excited to get your, to get awesome. your uh, signatures on these fans. JJ, right? We got JJ. Uh, JJ got himself, you know, some prints, the graveyard editions. Oh, Jay. Okay. So the last thing I'm going to say before I let you get back, the last breaking news, breaking news, breaking news is just as a reminder, we have our challenge coin sets available for sale right now. So you're going to need that at Fiend Fest, you know, exactly. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Right. So you're going to definitely, you know, hop on board. I mean, I think JJ was, did the right move and not only picked up some of these wonderful works by Dawn. But also picked himself the uh, picked up the challenge coin set. So, man, I don't know. I don't know what else to say <laughs> except for those challenge coin sets. You're gonna want them. You're gonna want them. Yeah. We're gonna have Swarm Fest. Swarm okay. Fest, awesome. Thank you, Sean. I'm gonna get out because I know we got more things to discuss. More amazing things to discuss with Don. Uh, I've been psycho Sean. Uh, you've been fantastic. Or. I've been, uh, what, hold on a second, I'm trying to remember what Brian wants me to say. Oh, yeah, that's right, that's right. You know, I'm crazy for customer service. You, yeah, you're psycho shot because you're crazy for customer service. Thanks, Sean. Appreciate it. Uh, hey, folks, we only got a couple more minutes before we uh, go live next up. We're going to do the, I guess, you know, I'm going to have to reboot, re, re, um, reset up my computer. I guess my connection is so great. So, um, great to see anything. Uh, Anything else? No, so it's, um, got some more love coming your way. Love you all. Thank you. Super excited to have your uh, signed by Dawn from town. I'm sure. So excited. I've got my yep. Sharpies ready. <laughs> Crazy thing. Yeah. So we're going to, from Arizona, we're going to send it over the border to where you're at. And you're in Calgary. Yeah. Uh, Canada. That's where at. So thank you for joining us the uh, northern side of the world. Um, let's see if it's anything else. Well, okay, awesome. Well, 
that should be good for right now. Let's uh, sign off. Everyone, thank you so much. This is the episode one of Artist Celebration of Dr. Tig. Make sure to join us in 15 minutes as we do the, at 11 o'clock the live uh, drawing. You're going to see one do some magic right in front of us. Thanks, Dawn. Thank you so much. Congratulations. I'm out uh, of those um, remark editions so quickly. And uh, thank you. I've been Jimmy Coffin for Coffin Comics signing off. See you in 15 minutes. See you later. Bye.